Hello and welcome to the three do it yourself steps to analyzing your VFP application webinar. And thank you for joining. Today's agenda will talk about the problem statement, the solution, the actual steps that we'll take to run our code matrix tool, a solutions demo. We'll talk about one particular next step, and then we'll see if there's any questions. OK, so the problem statement is the actual application can grow over time, and it's very easy to lose track of what you have. Also, typically uh, multiple developers uh, you know, participate in, in, in developing the code line after line after line, and um, could become quite cumbersome in, in terms of how, how large application is getting. And then lastly, you know, typically the application is built, say, 20 or 30 years ago, um, and it becomes really more like a ball of string. It, it's for these reasons um, Microsoft did create this code matrix utility to combat the, you know, these problems. It also assists us um, in terms of figuring out you know, high level costs of a migration. Um, and then and, all, and it also includes the, the duration. And and by the way, it just wouldn't be for a migration. It could be for, you know, just knowing what you have at any point in time is is very beneficial to, you know, to mitigating the risks. So the problem solution, uh, obviously, uh, it is our code matrix. So if we just follow what the slide says, we it's really for risk assessment, knowing what you have. Uh, will help in planning and mitigating the risks. The tool also quickly uh, creates summary reports that can be used for senior management discussions. And also it sizes up uh, the application complexity and it brings to the surface data migration issues that may help assess the project duration. So pr pretty big uh, list there in terms of solutioning um, the problem. OK, so before I show the demo, what I want to talk about is uh, you know, as far as what you're going to see here. So uh, the definition of code matrix here, the, the simple definition is, is it analyzes the entire project and its folders to provide an inventory, right? So we'll see the forms, the classes, reports, and the program files. We'll see objects and controls. We're going to see the methods and the procedures, functions, and so forth and so on. So this is what it will create a report um, it'll, it'll be a spreadsheet. It'll be both detailed and it'll be a summary. So it gives you know very good detail. OK, these at a high level are the DIY steps, you know, do it yourself steps. So uh, first you're going to want to get your latest source code um, without duplicates. Um, obviously, you, you want the, the code that, that you want to typically migrate, you know, everything. So whatever, if you have the, the, the cleanest part of your code, it would be the best uh, to run through, you know, to run through the tool. Um, on our website, you will see our um, link. So it's a code matrix link that once you pull it down, there are instructions there. Um, then what you would do is you would basically follow those instructions, um, you know, to, you know, to run the utility. And I'm going to show you once you press press that link. This is this is what you're going to see. Um, so this is code matrix information. You know, once you've downloaded it, so we have. Code matrix, and we're going to have um, the, the data, and then also the Fox Pro Code Matrix user guide, which basically walks you through step by step. Okay, so now I'm going to show the demo. Takes a few seconds to come up, so you'll see this is the latest version, 3.1, Microsoft Fox Pro Code Matrix. So we're going to, you know, select OK. The first thing we have to do is find the source code. You know, so that sort of makes sense, and I've already have it queued up here. So, so my example is under documents, and then it's under webinar material, and then here's the source code here. So that's a step that you'll have to take. So next thing is starting the analysis, right? So this is going to give us um, the high level uh, summary. So it's going to take a few seconds. Um, so what it's doing right now, um, it's compiling the data. Um, the auto counting the forms, the classes, reports, and program files. Uh, it's also counting the number of lines of code. Uh, it's counting the functions, the database containers, procedures, and methods. So, depending on how large your application is, you know, as far as lines of code, that's how long you know it will take. 
in this particular example, it's it's not a very large application, and I'll show you the, the number of lines of code, but you'll see that it's come up in a matter of say 30 seconds. And here here's the high level report that I am that I'm speaking about. And then what we're going to do is if you wanted to print the report, you can do that here. Um, however, we're not doing that obviously in this particular example, but you could do that if you wanted to. Then from here um, we have code matrix results. So this particular will show. The detail. As well as the summary and we'll go through that and I'll show you guys in a minute how that what that looks like. So I'm going to bring this in here. OK, you'll see this is the summary. You'll see here detail and summary. Right now we have the summary tab uh, queued up here. Um, the first look, the first six descriptions you hear from here down are the ones you know we had already saw right from the previous summary. However, the remaining ones were not there. So um, really the reason for that is a VFP drive project can have multiple modules in it and a program can be added to a project. Uh, they do exist in the folder. These are the ones that do exist that exist in the folder, but they are not associated with the VFP project, which is their which which is your PJX, which is why you're seeing it that way. So if we go across, we have number of files, lines of code, objects, methods, and number of comment lines. This you're going to see, uh, you know, as as the name states, a lot a lot more uh, to the right here. It goes on. A pretty long time, so let's just start uh, from left to right here. So you'll see the directory. So it's showing you the their actual path uh, where the file name is, and then what is also showing you is the file extension. So if you go down here, you can see all the file extensions. Okay, then obviously we have the number of lines of code, right? And then we have number of objects, and it goes so forth and so on. And you'll see the dupes. So uh, if the name appears twice, obviously it means um, you know, if it appears twice, there means, you know, there's no, there, I mean, if it says false, it means there's no dupes. Uh, file exists, it's kind of a self explanatory. At least this tells if the file exists physically in the folder. If there is a VFP project and a program file, it will say true. However, if the program file is missing, then it will say false. So it's giving some really good level of detail here. So here is the, the one particular next step that I had wanted to mention. Um, and even before I talk about this slide, I want to say that we're going to the, the plan is to do a few of these. Uh, a few of these tools that we, um, you know, because we, we have more than just code matrix. We have other we have other tool. We have other tools as well. Um, so that's to so be on the lookout for that. Um, so this slide talks about more about a deep dive. So if Microsoft can help out with the account inventory, it can look at the modern application you know obviously prepare the theme and mock up based on the modern ui framework we can look at the third party tools identify any third party then suggest anything any updates for enhancements we can look at the module breakdown um, and, and give some information around that we can make some suggestions about the uh, migration sequence uh, typically main menu but this could be other sequences that make more make more sense then we can look at the documentation give you the list of uh, DBCs and DBFs, things of that nature. Then we have external integration identifies all uh, external integration with VFP applications, so we can put that in the report. And then we're also going to show you uh, inactive components, right? There's certain things that you're not going to need over time, and this is something Microsoft can help you identify. And if this is something you're interested in, in enough doing for you, you can you can contact me, and uh, we can we can talk about it. So here is my contact information. Okay, it looks like it was pretty clear. I want to thank everybody for their time, and um, hope to see you next time.